Joining us now is Tao Jung. He's the founder and managing director of the investment firm Dow Ventures. So uh, due process, that's what this case is all about. Do you think TikTok has a strong case against the U.S. government? Um, well, thanks for having me, Elaine. Uh, I think TikTok has a case, but uh, I'm not sure about the prospects of TikTok winning this case, to be honest. Do you think that it actually maybe helps buy the company time against these deadlines laid out in Donald Trump's executive order? What is the purpose of this lawsuit then? Uh, I, I think uh, this is uh, TikTok's strategy to win itself more wiggle room uh, for the second actually uh, uh, decision, you know, the decision by uh, the Committee of uh, on Foreign Investments in the United States decision. So trying to win itself, uh, you know, some time. So um, when he, you know, gets to negotiate with, uh, you know, uh, potential buyers like Microsoft and Oracle, its value won't be uh, depreciated by, by that time. So hopefully it won't be banned by uh, September the 15th. But because if uh, TikTok expand uh, by September the 15th, I think uh, in the eyes of the negotiate, well, the parties they negotiating with was uh, on the commercial front, they were definitely going to lose value. Closely, are tech companies watching this case? Tech companies around the world, um, and what are they hoping to learn here? Uh, well, this is, uh, you know, um, from my perspective, this is definitely something, you know, a political rhetoric being leveraged by, uh, by, you know, the Trump administration in order to win the uh, election. Uh, but at the same time, I think, you know, uh, all Chinese technology companies, especially Chinese te technology companies, who have the ambition to expand their business to the U.S. Uh, internationally, uh, you know, they are, you know, paying a close attention to what is going to pan out to see, you know, uh, you know, what our strategy going to be uh, for the U.S. market and, and probably for some uh, other international markets as well. Do you think there are larger implications that go beyond Chinese tech companies? What about U.S. social media companies that were on the hot seat uh, in front of Capitol Hill lawmakers a few weeks ago? And perhaps their privacy issues and their presence outside the U.S.? I mean, does this open a door for not just Chinese tech companies, but other countries looking at U.S. tech companies? Uh, I think so, you know. So, you know, personally, I don't advocate, uh, you know, any tit-for-tat uh, tit tit kind of approach, uh, in, uh, especially when it comes to uh, business relationships, cross-border business relationship, because that's what I do, you know. I, I want to, don't want people, you know, uh, you know, to to adopt this such approach because uh, at the end of the day, it's kind of loose loose situation. So I think, you know, what the U.S. is doing is not necessarily, uh, you know, in terms of uh, TikTok, is is not necessarily in the best interest of everyone, including itself. So what will you be watching for in the weeks ahead? This lawsuit, uh, not really a surprise or a speculation that this would happen um, any day now. And here we have this lawsuit dropped. What will you be watching for? And, and what do you think will happen next? Yeah, I definitely want to see, you know, uh, from my side and what's going to happen, what's going to pan out with the lawsuit for sure. You know, whether, you know, TikTok can win itself some wiggle room to, uh, you know, to sustain itself in the U.S., you know, say, hopefully past, uh, um, you know, the November election, uh, whether, you know, the new uh, administration will, uh, will have a different kind of policy on international technology companies like TikTok. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely have a wait and see attitude as far as uh, this, uh, this case is concerned, Definitely. but I'm hoping for the best. I think a lot of young people uh, are in the same boat as you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. We appreciate it.